Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 2 and continuing ahead with the next topic that is 3.3 Dynamic Analysis. In this topic we will be again doing it into two different parts in order to understand all the concepts in more detail. To begin with first we have an overview of what exactly dynamic analysis is all about. Now, just quite similar to uh, static analysis, it helps you to identify key areas which could be uh, having a responsibility to make the performance degrade for an application. So, whereas static analysis is limited to non-executable code or programs when you talk about that, similarly, the dynamic analysis requires an execution of the code in order to analyze the quality characteristics of a product. So just for an example, when you talk about uh, performance testing of an application, it requires a lot of understanding on how exactly uh, the memory is allocated, whether it is releasing the memory or not, and then uh, it should not crash when we have certain number of users working simultaneously on a particular application at any point of time. What if uh, a uh, number of users log in continuously on the application for a prolonged period of time so we have volume testing so yes while these scenarios are being executed then at certain point of time the system may respond taking a longer duration of time or sometime it may crash as well or may not behave as expected now the more important thing is to identify or diagnose the reason behind it and that's where dynamic analysis comes into picture where we analyze the code or API functions written behind in order to observe the outcomes which we got when we were trying to execute the test. And that's what dynamic analysis will help you to find out that what is the root cause behind it that's, that is causing the outcome or such a behavior which is not expected. So yes, dynamic analysis is the entire way of analyzing a particular program code, making sure that these anomalies are actually eliminated which requires a continuous running of the product or the code and then understanding the issue. So obviously uh, this is uh, what we have to understand from the overview of dynamic analysis. Further, we just have to add some more examples to be more precise on understanding that the possibility of memory leak may be detectable by the static analysis as well, but a memory leak is readily or uh, apparent with the dynamic analysis. So static analysis can tell you uh, if there is a memory leak going to happen or not, but where exactly memory leak is happening, that can be done by dynamic or interacting with it. So the product has to be executed. Failures that are not immediately reproducible can have significant consequences on the testing and uh, on the ability of releasing the product for, for the further use of the software. Such failures may be caused by any of the thing like memory or resource leaks, incorrect use of pointers and other corruptions. Due to the nature of failures, which may include the gradual versioning of the system uh, performance or even system crashes. So testing strategies must consider the risk associated with the uh, such defects and uh, where appropriate uh, perform dynamic analysis to reduce them. So a test, technical test analyst must take the responsibility here to uh, understand such typical issues or defects which we generally get during dynamic testing and uh, prepare the scenarios in such a way that we try to uh, cover them as a part of the execution and make sure that further it is analyzed in order to find out the key area behind that. Further to continue, we do have to understand a little more in detail of that. For example, dynamic analysis may be applied to accomplish the following. So what could be the key objectives of conducting dynamic analysis or where it could be more helpful? To prevent failures from occurring by detecting memory leaks and wild pointers. Analyze system failures which cannot easily be reproduced. Evaluate network behavior. Improve system performance by providing information on runtime system behavior, which can be used to make informed changes. So these are the typical things which uh, we just now discussed about, and it, it it really makes you understand that how exactly dynamic analysis will be helpful in order to improvise the non-functional characteristics of an application. Further, dynamic analysis may be performed at any test level. It's just not limited to. Uh, unit testing or integration or only performance, recovery, security, usability and all. It can be actually started right from the beginning 
So any level, uh, you can start doing your dynamic analysis in order to meet the expectations of quality characteristics. And it requires technical and system skill to do the following. What kind of activities can we do? Specify the testing objective of dynamic analysis. Determine the proper time to start and stop the analysis and analyze the results. So it equally requires the team to be very much strong in order to find out the issues and root cause. So the team must be very much familiar with concepts like uh, performance engineering, secure coding practices, or best practices for writing the codes. Having a proper uh, orientation on that would help them to have a clear objective to identify the root cause and be familiar with the standards so that they can find out the root causes quite easily and simple way. So even when you talk about system testing, dynamic analysis tool can be used and uh, it's not limited to manual because that could be very complicated. So we always prefer to have a tool support in order to conduct the dynamic testing or dynamic analysis. Additionally, in this segment, we are also covering another topic from this section 3.3 dynamic analysis that is detecting memory leaks. We are talking a little more about memory leaks here. And first of all, let me tell you in brief that what exactly memory leak is. Memory leak basically means uh, when you uh, run a particular piece of code, it allocates a memory on the RAM, that is random access memory, and uh, makes that particular activity work or make that particular action work. And uh, it is very much required that at the end of the program, uh, the program should be written in such a way that it automatically releases that memory on the RAM so that the other program when the user moves to the next phase or next module or another set of activities of the same application, uh, it must be released in order to allocate the memory from those. So yes, the activity which is no longer being performed by the user should release those memories automatically so that the other programs can allocate or occupy enough space on the RAM in order to make it fast and respond to you faster. And this does happen with a lot of certain applications which do allocate the memory but does not have the capabilities to remove it automatically or probably you have to go and refresh your system. So you do experience those things that sometimes when you refresh, right click refresh on the system desktop, you do see uh, system improvements or performance improvements. So similarly, any application, uh, we cannot just go for refresh, it is adding reloading. So when we do such activities, it might be possible that the memory is not automatically released and that becomes a challenge because the activities which you have been doing so far has already allocated a space. Now, the moment you move to a next activity, that RAM doesn't have enough space to accommodate that activity, thus your response time decreases. Or in the other sense, like, you know, it says that the response time increases, performance degrades. So that is where we are talking about how do you detect memory leaks. So first of all, it is important to know that the programmer has the key responsibility to make sure that he writes the standard codes in such a way that uh, once this uh, program is exited or like completed, then it automatically has a, a provision to release the memory which was allocated by the piece of program. So it is uh, it should be written in such a way that it releases that memory automatically so that it can save a lot of time for the user to have a seamless experience while working with your product memory leaks can cause uh, problems which develop over time and may not be immediately obvious this may be in the case for example the software has been recently installed or the system restarted which often occurs during the testing so for these reasons, the negative effects of memory leaks may first be noticed when the program is in production. So sometimes a lot of issues cannot be even uh, utilized or observed while doing the formal way of testing and interacting with the product in non-production environment. But the moment it reaches the production, a lot of uh, non-functional testing does happen there and specific to performance testing to find out such issues and risk associated with that. The primary symptom of memory leak is steadily worsening the system response time. So yes, we were just talking about the same thing and ultimately resulting in system failure. That means no space to accommodate any activity. So probably your system will hang or it may just crash. While such failures may be resolved by restarting the system, this may not be always practical because not every time you can prefer to have your system restart. You might be in the middle of some important activities. So you just can't opt for that. So many dynamic analysis tools are also available uh, in order to assist or you know detect memory leaks so that they can be corrected. 
simple memory monitors are also available uh, which you can make use of because doing it that manually could be quite complicated and observing the exact point where that happened uh, should be critical so it's really important for you to take care of such tools and identify the tools being a technical test analyst to assist your team in order to have effective measurement of memory leaks and resolu resolu resolving that particular area of the issue so this is the part one of the dynamic analysis. We'll be talking more about this in different segments coming up next. So stay tuned for that. As of now, this is what we had from this tutorial. And I hope you have got a good understanding on the overview of dynamic analysis and detecting memory leaks. Should you have anything else in order to understand better, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.